If you want to pump your body and expand your mind, there's only one place to go. Mind Pump. Mind Pump. With your hosts, Sal Stefano, Adam Schaefer, and Justin Andrews. In this episode of Mind Pump. The Sewed. So for the first 44 minutes, uh, we talk about current events and have some fun conversation. Shenanigans. After that, we get into the fitness talk. Here's what we talked about in that first 44 minutes. We talked about our Oakland Hills getaway. We just came back from the Oakland Hills, uh, and we were, you know, creating stuff and getting creative and having a good time. And uh, I was giving everybody oh, yeah. Organifi Pure to get their brains working. Awesome. Uh, Organifi is one of our sponsors. Their supplements are organic. They sell protein powders, green powders, red juices, and of course the Pure that we like to use, which Gold is gold juice too. Natural nootropic. If you go to Organifi.com forward slash Mind Pump and use the code Mind Pump, you'll get twenty percent off. Uh, Adam talked about his unique allergy mask. Uh, he likes <laughs> he likes smelling certain things. A little bit of a MacGyver move there. Yeah. Hey, it worked. We talked about wanting to buy a Mind Pump house. That's right. We're talking about getting a house. For mind pump Ooh, and outfitting it, outfitting it mind pump style, which includes putting a gym in the garage with PRX equipment. We love their home gym equipment. It makes too much sense. If so. you go to prxperformance.com forward slash mind pump and use the promo code mind pump, you'll get 5% off and a free MAPS Prime program with purchase of $500 or more. Then we talked about Spotify's new voice ads. That's really cool. CBD in Oreo products. What? Necessary. There was an opiate lawsuit. We talked about addiction and kratom. Uh, wild shrimp apparently are parting their asses off in London. They've oh, been testing going down. positive for cocaine. <laughs> yeah. We talked about strength training and adolescence. A study came out showing it reduces suicide rates. Uh, and then Justin brings up the new movies coming out, John Wick 3 and Aladdin. Get the popcorn out, huh? Then we get into the fitness part of this episode. The first question was, what are some natural ways to fix a hormone imbalance in women? So we go over our strategies. The next question, uh, what are our thoughts on group classes like grit, body pump, etc.? cetera? Uh, Adam's opinion is quite strong on that part of this episode. You're going to love it. Next question, what is the ideal body fat percentage for both men and for women. And the final question, mm. how the hell can someone like The Rock look so awesome, yet work so hard and sleep so little, we unveil mm. The Rock's secret training modalities and nutrition and why he looks so amazing. It's You'll want to listen to that. Rock. Part. It's the secrets. We give them out. Yeah. Also, this month is May that means next month is summertime. Do you want to get lean for summer like everyone else? Okay, the best way to burn body fat in a short period of time- I want to bulk. Besides nutrition, got to do that, is to burn a lot of calories doing high-intensity interval training type workouts. Well, the problem with most of those workouts is they're garbage. Nobody places any emphasis on the programming. They don't know how to put them together properly. People get hurt or they burn their bodies out or they just don't get really good results. So we got upset with that and we designed our own- HIT program called MAPS HIT, which is expertly programmed high-intensity interval training. The right way to do it. It's a short, high-calorie burning type program. It's 50% off right now for all of you trying to get ready for the summer. Here's what you do to get the discount. Go to MAPS HIT, that's M-A-P-S-H-I-I-T, there's two I's, dot com. Use the code HIT50, H-I-I-T, five zero, no space, for the discount, that's 50% off. Get ready for summer. Do it now. Dude, that town that we were just in, I didn't even know existed, that little part of Oakland. Yo, what was it called again, Doug? Montclair Montclair Village or yeah. something like that? Yeah, yeah, that's it. Mm. What a great little place. Yeah, shout out to the, man, shout out to the Flippers, Flippers Burger Place that we yeah. went to. Yeah. That, that place. place is awesome. There's not a lot of places when we go somewhere and we oh. eat that we return the second day and come back and eat again. It was so good. Oh, dude, I had the, what was it called, dog? Bibimbap. Bibimbap. What? Bibimbap. 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 There's okay. actually yeah. different spellings for it. Depends on where you yeah, go. Yeah, and it was in a cast a, iron skillet. Is that a Japanese? No, it's uh, Korean. 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 Right. And it's got, it had Way rice off. in it and some vegetables and it had Korean meat in it and we put kimchi in it and mm -hmm. spicy stuff. Damn, that was good. And you guys had burgers. Yeah. 
that you guys, I could not, you guys it must have talked about- It was a gluten-free about, paradise for me. You must have talked about how much you liked the burger five times while you were eating the burger. Yeah, it was, I mean, yeah. it was orgasmic. But anyway, that, that town is really cool because it's up in the Oakland Hills, and I've never been there before. And the house we were in, uh, you know, for the listeners who don't know this, what we do oftentimes is we'll go away to work on a project or whatever, just fosters better creativity and whatnot. And we're in these house, we're in this house, and it's in the Oakland Hills. And these hills are these houses are built like part of them inside the hill. It almost seems like right. Yeah, they all carve kind of- right into the the <clears throat> mountain. Mm-hmm. And we found out later that like we were right on a fault line, Hayward Fault. Yeah, yeah. Is that That's safe? Not smart. Yeah, is that uh, what's the safety of that? Uh, not at all. I feel like if a you know, big- I was up there in the in like Oakland when the Battle of the Bay was happening when the eighty nine earthquake. Like I was there, and then like uh, the next day. <clears throat> is when the earthquake happened. So. Oh, really? Yeah. But see, that was a San Andreas fault, which is a different okay, fault. Okay, different fault. Yeah, the Hayward fault, from what I've read, uh, is like due for a massive, right? If, massive earthquake. It has to be. Yeah, and if your house is in, you got to think if you're in this side of the hill, wouldn't it want to like skateboard down the hill? Oh yeah, it's going to toboggan its way down. Oh, yeah. you would think though that a lot of those houses have to have taken some precaution, like as far as reinforcements. And I mean, I could tell that that's I mean, what you think, right? This house was five stories. I don't remember the last time I've been in a house that was five stories. That's because it's I narrow, know. though. Yeah. You got to yeah. paint the picture. It's not like it's a wide five stories. Still it's narrow. Big, it was still a big fucking house. Though. Sure, sure, I mean, sure. Five was. stories is five stories. I mean, it was a it was a it was a big place. I liked it. You know, cool you have, view though. Something you know, I can always count on Sal to have the the supplements, right? Yeah. <laughs> first thing when we wake up in the morning, like right away, they're on the counter. First of all, too, yeah, I was on the bottom, the very bottom floor. Sal was on the very top floor. So I thought if I divided myself by four floors, that I wouldn't hear him in the morning. But no. it still never fails. No, nah, he's, he's fucking. He's a beast. You walk like you have concrete feet. Wait, hold on a second. Yeah. I didn't even wake up that early. <laughs> yeah, you was did. I still I waking know, you guys? That was up? probably me. Yeah, was that still I, got like, a, I got hella early. Was that morning. you that was flintstoning around in the morning? Fl- yeah, my, fucking a man. I hear like it's seven o'clock, six thirty, or whatever it was. I hear all over the place. I'm like, what? Did you really? But then I get then I get up there. Yeah, I got some pounds. And I see my Organifi Pure on the counter with my little water bottle and stuff like that. And I didn't. I didn't say anything. And right away. You just, oh, I love him. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I did. I was like, okay, okay. I well, can't. it gets us ready for the work we're about He's to do. Priming your cognition. The only thing that though you forgot was to ask him for uh, his Zyrtec. Oh, I know. So how funny is that? Like, I should have known too. The guy that always has everything and all the supplements. I didn't even think uh, to ask you about allergies. And bro, my allergies were so bad. Okay, so I did something. This is crazy, right? Uh, so again, I'm in the very bottom floor. The first night that we were there, um, the the house is divided. It's so big it has two two heater units, right? So there's a, a heater unit for the the top floor, like top two floors. The bottom three floors have their own heater, unit. and that one the pilot light was uh, not lit. And so the first night, we, and it's 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 down deep, and it's like partly inside the hill, so it's like a cellar. It's totally, oh, yeah, it's totally in the hill. We're freezing so our balls. It was off. forty-seven degrees, forty-seven degrees in the house uh, on the first night. Froze, and I like it cold, but not that cold. Like it was like see your breath cold in the house. And but I slept good because I was bundled up, and I slept with the blankets over my head and everything. So the next I day, my pants. We call the the owner of the house comes down, relights the pilot light for us. You know, we start we and we turn on. Well, I had a fireplace in my room too, so I, I I turned on the fireplace to get it nice and warm and cozy in there. And I figured oh, I'll just shut the fireplace off when I come down to bed. Well, we went to bed last night, and my room was like a fucking sauna. It was so hot. I was like, shit. It's like, it's like a pizza oven. So, yeah. I, so you oh, went from yeah. cellar to like oven. Yes, yeah. which is probably worse for me. I don't sleep good in the heat. And so I op- I turn it off. I open up the, all the windows in my room, and it's freezing cold outside, so the breeze starts to cool the room off. Nice. Problem is. It lets like all the the pollen and shit into the room, and I just have this like allergy attack. I mean, I, I go through a whole roll of toilet paper. I can't breathe. I'm sitting up. It, I'm like, it's you mis- need to talk about your, <laughs> your special uh, allergy technique. Yeah, dude. <laughs> so, well, this is how crazy <laughs> it was. Ridiculous. It was so bad that I had to get up. I had to wash my face. I had to wash my hands. Um, the shirt that I had wore. That day, uh, I actually grabbed it to blow my nose, and I could feel that it had stuff on it from being outside earlier in the day, and it bothered me even more. And so I'm literally having like an allergy attack. So you can probably hear my voice. I'm still bad. And I'm like, what do I do? I, I, I got to stop breathing this in. It's just making it worse, but I'm in it in this room. And I, <laughs> I come up with this idea, 
uh, brilliant. To, I get in my. <laughs> Yeah. If it's so it funny, it's like a cross between MacGyver and, yeah. f- and Bear. With that, guy I wish I would have just walked in your room and saw this. Yeah. So yeah. I, I get in my, I, I have, I get in my bag. I still have clean clothes for the next day and stuff, and I get a, a fresh pair of Calvin Klein underwear boxer briefs. <laughs> Naturally, <laughs> and I stick my head through one leg of it, and I wear it like those uh, the ski veils or whatever you call. It. I forget what you call those. Where yeah, they, so is where, it like crotch on your nose? Or? No. So my head, I put my head, I put my head through the big part, the first, the big part, and then through one leg, so it was kind of tight. Okay. And then it fit around my. my <laughs> so nose. his so his nose is right next to where uh, the like the taint the, the bunch area. Hey, yeah, they were yeah. fresh yeah, and yeah, clean. You got, you got taint. Wore, they weren't dirty God underwear. Damn, if I walked in that room and saw you with your head in your underwear, I would have been like, <laughs> it was the only. I would have been like, of course, this motherfucker smells his own <laughs> underwear. <laughs> No, of course. So I didn't mean to, mean to interrupt your masturbation yeah, session. Oh, my bad. This, this is a thing going yeah. on right here. This Go is and a finish, thing. finish yeah. yourself off. I'll be yeah, back. Yeah. We'll get to work later. Don't worry about it. Bro. He's just like, oh. It oh. Wor- hey, it Smells worked, good. though. Yes. It, w- it worked because they were so fresh and clean, and they hadn't been tainted by all the fucking by pollen. Taint. Yeah. yeah. So No taint stains. I actually finally got to sleep. And it worked, huh? It did. Oh, absolutely. I slept the whole night. I had, and, and tell you what, there a couple times I had rolled over and it had slid down and I started sneezing and, and had to blow my nose again. And so as long as I kept it covered, it would fil- filter all that and it, I could breathe and I could actually kind of sleep. See, it's a good thing you wear those underwear, not the ones I wear. You would have been fucked with my <laughs> Yeah, oh, yeah there's the, the, those bikini briefs yeah. would have fucked <laughs> not helped me out. You don't have all. a whole lot of coverage with those things. <laughs> Bro, when we were in, I think we were at the Grand Canyon, uh, yeah. uh, Jessica and Courtney were doing laundry oh, yeah. and, and they were folding. I think Courtney Cor- was laughing Courtney at my was underwear. was laughing hysterically. <laughs> <laughs> She's like, because she was trying to help fold and everything. She's like, like, like pulled them up and she was confused for She's a like, second. Jessica, She's are like, these yours? Wait, these are, these are male. <laughs> and I was like, yeah. And then she got all embarrassed. You know, we should really, <laughs> we should really consider uh, investing in a property since this has become such. Well, a- we've talked about this, and yeah. and if you look at the market, it, the what, what closed me on this was when you started talking about the how disrupting the Airbnb and VRBO, you know, that market is. And it was like a light bulb went off, like duh. And you look at like because that's what we did, right? We just VRBO a house. Yeah. Here's a massive house that cost us less money than it would have cost to get two shit dirt cheap uh, hotel rooms, which is what we would have had to do. Right. Yeah. And it's cheaper to have this massive house. That whole space is being disrupted. So I'm like, oh, yeah, if we bought a property, not only would we be able to use it ourselves for stuff like this, but then if we rented it, like, right. it, like people would love it and we could make it. We'd and, outfit it. Yeah, and then we could make it like a mind pump home. Like, the thing that every house we've rented so far, more than anything, I feel like is missing because we always had the biggest challenge I think we have is staying consistent with our lifting when we go for two or three days. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I would love to like PRX the shit out of like some, oh, out hell of, like, yeah. one of those garages. 100%. Yeah. If we buy a house somewhere, I like Tahoe. We've talked about that before because it's close enough. We can use it and it's a great destination, is to take the garage and turn it into... Uh, like a sick ass garage gym with the PRX, you know the 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 cage that folds out and the bumper plates and the bars and what just is it, make it a nice garage gym. Now, Justin, they yeah. have. I mean, you know the most because you have one at your house and stuff like that. How does the the packaging work? Like, do they have like a, a like a standard like just the bench and the squat rack package, and then there's like the fucking Il Nana. You get everything. In yeah, it? the lowest package. Like, if you want just the squat rack by itself, the bare minimum. Uh, yeah, bare minimum. You can just get the fold out rack. Um, and it doesn't have a pull up bar because this is like the the uh, the one that's not quite as tall. Yeah, and so you can get that even without the bench. So the bench I added is is like a, an additional um, you know piece to that that I wanted because I wanted that to fold out because I thought that'd be rad. And it is super convenient to have you know the bench just fold out from the wall and be out of the way. Yeah. Uh, so I I mean I really recommend that because it's just such a fucking convenience. Um, but yeah, you can do that. And then you can also the racks and everything else. They, it's like you, it's like you kind of build up to these different bundles they put together. Like you can build up. So you have more options of like, I want two, uh, racks of, of weights versus, you know, I could just do one rack of weights. Um, you know, you can add like a taller, uh, cage where you have a pull up bar and like you have one that's like even one of those, um, I forget what what it's it's like a it's kind of like well CrossFit they have them for like all those things where they uh you know they do their 
gymnastic moves and shit. Yeah, I have zero idea. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <it's, laughs> I don't know what it's called. It's the one that's like really high. What story was he talking about last night? And he lost. Oh and my god, what bro! Was, what was that? What, I don't remember. But he he was, was, oh, I know what it was. You were explaining it was really so- <laughs> confusing. Yeah, I was confused, <laughs> uh, and I understand why that that didn't uh, come across very well. <laughs> Well, there was a moment where, and I know I'd been smoking, so I really didn't say anything right away. I was like, man, am I that high right yeah. now without, like, confusing? I was trying to talk about, like, voice. Like, there's this demand, this high demand oh, for that's designers what this- to come over into the audio side of the of uh, things and, and create all this UI experience for, like, audio. So, so- that, that reminds me, of the, okay, this reminds me of an art, because I brought it up that I was talking about, um, you know, the future of, like, how things are going to be in, virtually, how everything's going to be just voice activated and spotify right now they're they're moving into this space right now where every they, they're the first ones to do these ads so real soon here you're going to hear on like your spotify ads get hit to you and you'll be able to voice activate by so let's say you're listening oh to, shit so you're going to soon going to be like listening to your favorite playlist on spotify and like let's say i was shopping online just the other day for a new pair of adidas maybe i didn't buy it i jumped out of the checkout line and then all of a sudden i'll be like right in the middle of my my playlist it'll be like Oh, you know, for fifty percent off, Adam, you can buy those Adidas bo- uh, Boost for wow. whatever. Say yes. W- would you like to buy? Yes. <laughs> Done. Done. One, not even a click. Just well, a, just a yes. I'm sure there's gonna be, have to be a confirm. <laughs> oh, I'm sure it'll be yeah. yes, and then confirm. Like, like uh, having sex with your girl. Yes. 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 Next thing you know, oh no, yeah, you get I all these packages. I spent fifteen yeah. million dollars at fucking. <laughs> <laughs> What the hell's going on oh, here, man? So that's we, great, though. So no. So yeah, no. I'm. Uh, so I. Of course, we were we were we were talking business and we're discussing that the future, what it looks like, and how how does Mind Pump play in a role that, and how we evolve our business, and and then Justin starts talking about how he sees designers are now starting to move into this voice space, and he was trying to explain <laughs> what they would do. And Sal, I, I mean, I, did, I thought it was just me who was like clueless while I'm listening to. No, then you guys started to come up with some idea for like, uh, you know, like holographic images and stuff, and I'm like, what? Well, I was trying to figure out what <laughs> yeah. you were explaining. I was <laughs> well, like, that's right. I started getting confused. Everybody was confused, <laughs> and then it, it just turned into a clusterfuck. And it was it like, basically oh. what you, Justin, what you were trying to say is what they're trying to do is create a different experience. Yeah. And, and with some of the stuff that's voice activated, they're going to have things pop up that you can see as well. Right. Maybe holographic, maybe not. Maybe not. Yeah. Right. But the way you explained it was <laughs> with the voice activated c- equipment and the UI, and there's going to be things <laughs> like things that come up. Stop. And he's using his hands yeah. like this. Yeah. And Stop. he goes, yeah. and to make the experience different and change. Bro, I was high too. <laughs> and, like a okay. ramp, and like a ramp water, it would all come together with yeah. this. <laughs> And I look all turned. I, need, I needed like a, you know somebody in there to really you know interpret for me. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. I was like, was in my head. I was fully engaged and interested in the conversation, and I'm looking at Justin, and, I, and I'm like, fuck, I, and, I'm, and, I'm, and, I'm, and I'm and at this moment, I'm going like, <laughs> is it just I, me? Am, am I high? Am I really high? <laughs> and I look over at Sal, and I go like. Uh. Explain that again, and and Sal just starts laughing, and I'm just like, <laughs> I'm like, what is that? Like, and then I think he's laughing at me, like I was too stupid to get it, and like, yeah. I, you know, uh, went over my head. He's like, no, I have no idea what he's talking about. Either. I'm like, oh god, thank god. I was like, fucking <laughs> Justin explaining shit, dude. <laughs> yeah, there's still work to be done. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's a good time. Well, what are you gonna do? Uh, I love it. Speaking of uh, of cannabis, w- was it Oreo cookies? Yes, dude. CBD. Are, are, what are they doing? They're putting CBD in some Come cookie. On. Dude, really? why? Why? Yeah. What, what is CBD going to do in there? Yeah, for what? This is getting ridiculous. What's the Stop purpose? It. It's getting ridiculous. Yeah, but I don't understand. But that's the thing. I don't understand really? the purpose of Stoners putting. Stoners love Oreos, so we're just going to do this. Yeah, yeah, like what? What is it for? It doesn't add flavor to you it. You know what sucks it. was I actually was really. I thought it was really cool when we first started the podcast that we, you know, early on, and and I don't know how many fitness or health podcasts were talking about marijuana four years ago. We were. You know, and I thought that was cool that we were kind of sharing the health benefits of CBD and what what's coming out in studies and what we think the future of it looks like. And I was really excited about it back then. And now I have this like sour taste in my mouth mm-hmm. over it. It's like, yeah. man, now we've bastardized it and we've put it in everything and make it seem like it's the cure all and the best thing for. And, and not only that, but they're uh, they're annoying. acting as if there's no potential negatives from consuming CBD all the time. They're all, they're also assuming and acting in, in that way. 
And and I'm here to tell you that there's nothing like that that exists in the world. Nothing well, at all. Well, did we? Did I share that article with you? I remember I was asking your opinion on it. Did we share that on the podcast? Right? No, where they were showing some changes in liver. Uh, no, 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 no. They were talking about uh, how it uh, lack of blood flow to the brain. Not not CBD, but cannabis. Yeah, just in general. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's the psychoactive ones that really have that effect on the brain. But nonetheless, oh, so C- it wasn't CBD. It was no, just- but but still, CBD does have effects in the body. And so anything that has an effect on the body is going to have, well, they're all effects. And I hate to say side effects, uh, but I have to use that term because when I say side effects, people understand that it's effects that are not the ones that are desired. Right, not desired. But yeah. in reality, side effects are just effects. They're just the same effects of a substance. And CBD, yes, in studies is you know safe in terms of toxicity, and it seems to be safe in a lot of different tests and stuff. But long-term use of cons- inconsistent just kind of like, uh, like you know, not worrying about it use, where it's like, it's in my cookies, it's in my water, I don't care, it's whatever. Um, they're acting like there's no other potential effects, and I bet we're going to find that, you know, in some cases, it's probably not a good idea to have your kids eat Chips Ahoy CBD cookies all the time, both because it's a fucking cookie, so that's probably yeah. why it's not good, and then second, because CBD's got some effects on the endocannabinoid system, which does affect the development of the brain and... We don't know what that's going to look like. I think they're, they're so haphazard about it that they're going to cause a knee-jerk reaction from the government to regulate the fuck out of it all of a sudden yeah. or something. You know, and it's it just, just so looks stupid. exactly like. I mean, protein was on this massive, like they fortified protein and, and everything, and then cookie, you know, with with protein, yep. and cereals with protein. Well, at least protein is making a, its a way. essential macronutrient, though, right? You yeah, know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, yeah, at least it's got that going for it. Yeah, where CBD is like you could go your whole life and not have CBD and be just fine, and now yeah. we're infusing it and everything. No, like, I think they're they're trivializing it at the yeah. same and and, and uh, you know making it like it's um like it doesn't like a like it's not it got some important effects beneficial effects which it does and they're trivializing it like it's this oh hey stoners we're here we're gonna yeah. throw some cbd and something for you yeah, like, I, heard, I heard you like this stuff <laughs> yeah exactly yeah. so yeah, why, why we're on the drug talk i got something for you guys so uh a boston jury found john kapoor a one-time billionaire and founder chairman of drug company uh guilty of racketeering conspiracy to boost sales of fennel fennel is that how i say that yeah. uh based drug and throw gasoline on the opiate crisis fire right now so this is gonna this is the first like executive that they're holding responsible for this massive opiate and i read this the other day i did not know this you guys know that 100 what did i tell you the number was sal 162 or something like that a day yeah 160 people or so give or take a few i don't remember the exact every number, day die every single day from uh opiates Wow. Isn't that crazy? Yeah, that's a lot. So what they were doing, and this has been around for a long time. So I had buddies that were in uh, pharmaceutical sales, and this was like a normal practice. And they've been trying to change this for, I don't know, at least the last decade, maybe longer. And of course, there's still companies that do this type of shit, which is like bribing doctors to, sus- to prescribe, using yep. cash, appealing sales reps, lavish dinners and more, like doing things to get them to push these drugs on their patients. This has been like a common practice for a long time. Well, this is the first time where they're actually starting to hold a CEO or an, a, a major executive responsible for what the company is doing before. Before it would be like this. You know, you're a sales rep, you you happen to be the top guy in the world and you're or top guy for the company and you're selling a fuck ton, you're pushing a ton of these drugs, and it's kind of like no one says anything. The doctor, the the, the sales rep goes and takes the doctor and says, hey, you know, if you get this many units done, you might find a BMW in your driveway too. And I'm the the executive that's so far below me, I I don't see that happening. I don't know, so I can just, it's kind of- Well, haven't they just recently, I mean, they busted all those doctors for like trading prescriptions for sex. Like that that was already like something that they were like cracking down on. Yeah, well, that's that's a whole nother level. Yeah, I mean, exactly. But I mean that, it's gotten to that level. This is is the first time they've used something like racketeering in in something like this, which was that that law was created for the mafia. Yeah, and what they're saying is that he's doing illegal practice this is to get money, whether it's money laundering or bribing or breaking other you know types of laws, uh, is what they're trying to say. First off, the opiate, the current opiate epidemic, which is massive right now and exploding, opiate overdoses have gone through the roof. Much of that could be put down square at the feet of uh, pharmaceutical companies and our medical system. 
the way that they prescribe opiates and the way they tell people to use them is one of the major reasons why opiate use and addiction has gone through the roof. And a lot of those opiate overdoses are people who are prescribed opiates and they're using them according to right. the way they're supposed to well, use them. Yeah, exactly. They're not even necessarily abusing them. Not abusing them. them, yeah. They're just staying well, on top of, uh, ahead of their pain, as they say. If you've listened to the podcast for a long time, you know my story because I know I've shared it at least two or three times on here. But that's exactly how I fell into becoming addicted to them. Mm -hmm. And I had no idea. I knew nothing like about it, really. Like I was really uh, naive to opiates and how it interacted with the body. It was just something I never, as a trainer, I never came across a time where I had to research it or look into it. Mm -hmm. I tear my ACL and my MCL. I go and I have surgery. I'm in the, some of the most pain I've ever been in my life. Of course, they prescribe me Vicodin. I start taking the Vicodin. I'm reading the back of the bottle, and it says take one every four hours. So I, when I first start taking them, I try and not take them. I take them when the pain gets bad, and sometimes that's five hours, six hours. Sometimes it's four hours, whatever, and I'm kind of following that. I come back to my doctor, and I'm like, I'm in a lot of pain still. Okay, well, here's a double-strength one, right? So then I'm now I'm taking the, double, the Norcos, the, the, the double-strength one. So I'm doing that same type of thing. I'm the same things happening again where I'm trying not to really take it very much, but I'm finding that I'm still in pain. And the doctor is like, well, listen, wh tell me how you're taking it. And I tell him, well, I, I, I take it in the morning, like when I wake up because I'm really stiff in the morning and it hurts from when I sleep. And then, you know, normally around midday or so, I start to feel the pain again. And so I take another one and, and they're like, oh, no, no, you, you want to stay ahead of the pain. And even if it says every four and you're noticing that you're getting pain by four, start taking it like every three hours, you know, or take it before the pain sets in mm -hmm. and be consistent with mm -hmm. it. I'm like, okay. So that green lighted me to like mm -hmm. justify throwing them in my mouth one every like three to four hours. Physiological dependence. Yeah. So the next thing you know, I'm at about four or so. And again, noticing that like, oh, I, I need them more often yeah. or doubling or taking one and a half now. Before I know it, I'm like three months into this thing and I've ramped up to, I think it was somewhere between seven and nine on some days mm -hmm. of these Norco strength, double strength Vicodin. And not knowing anything about addiction with these yet. Like I'm really naive to it. I just... And because I, I don't think that uh, because I'm being prescribed to do this, I'm just really kind of getting into it's, taking it. It's not a drug. It's not a drug dealer. It's your doctor. Yeah, it's my. And so and I'm not. And you're doing what they told you. Right. And so and now I go through my rehab process. Pain is pretty much gone away for me. And I just cut cold turkey. I just mm -hmm. stop. Mm -hmm. And I go through these unbelievable flu like symptoms. And I'm certain that I'm, I have the flu. And I'm like, oh, my God, this miserable flu, shakes and cold sweats and I can't sleep and headaches and my stomach feels uneasy, the shits, like everything. It's just I feel like I got hit with like the bird flu and I, I am miserable all night long. I get up in the next morning and I'm like, oh, my God, all I want to do is sleep. And I'm like, well, you know, the Vicodin made me sleepy. Like I'll take one. I still had some left of my prescription. And so I take one and I'll never forget this moment. I took that fucker, and within 30 minutes to an hour, I didn't just feel better like all my flu symptoms went away. I felt energized. Like, flu symptoms went all away, and I felt good. And I was like, holy shit. Mm -hmm. And then I got online right away. Get online, and I, like, started researching opiates and opiate addiction and how it, how it works with the body and how, how it pairs with the receptors, and then you get, adju you get adjusted to that, and then you have to take more. I'm like, oh, my God. I'm addicted to it. My body is physiologically addicted to these pills that I had. I had no clue that yeah, I they're was super powerful. And, man. and here's what's crazy. Okay, so so doctors have to go through uh, kind of like personal trainers. You know, you get a certification. In order to keep your certification active, you have to go through continued education courses. Mm -hmm. So doctors have to do something kind of similar. It's different, but it's kind of similar. Where they have to take a certain amount of courses in order to be able to continue practicing. And what these pharmaceutical companies do is they, because they have a lot of money and they make a lot of money. They, they have a vested interest there. They, yeah. they conduct many of these courses and get them approved to, to be part of the continued education. So now you're a doctor. You have to take so many courses. One of the courses you take is pain management. And guess what they teach you in there? Right. Stay ahead of the pain. Yeah. So now doctors are learning that the appropriate way to take an opiate <clears throat> is to stay ahead of the pain because in our studies we showed that when patients do it that way, they suffer the least amount of pain, which is true. Yeah. But they don't show the other side of it, which is right. this is a very, very high likelihood where you're going to develop a physiological dependency yeah. and the adaptation process ramps up. 
And so these doctors are even good, you know, good doctors. And a lot of doctors are good. I trained a lot of doctors. And every single one of them I trained, incredible integrity, wonderful, wonderful people who truly cared about their patients. This yeah, one, this is engineered in that process. This, and and I'm, I'm saying that because when I first, before I started training doctors, I had kind of this really bad taste in my mouth of Western medicine, partially because of my own, when my, my health issues came up, I had to solve them myself and they provided no no value. And because you hear a lot of horror stories and we're also in the, in the fitness and health space, right? When I started training these doctors, I was like, wow, these people really care about people and this and that. And you start to learn that they take these courses and this is just what they're taught. And they're taught in very convincing ways. Like I said, if, 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 if you're a doctor, imagine you're a doctor, you're taking this course on pain management. Your number one complaint you get from your patients is pain. Pain, pain, pain. It hurts, hurts, hurts. You go and they're like, oh, we did this study and we found that if people take this right before the other one wears off, mm -hmm. none of them have pain. They can get back to work. They can right. satisfaction's up. And, the, and you leave and you're like, oh, cool. Okay, this is what I'm going to do. So you start prescribing it this way. And, and this is this is the opiate epidemic can be late. I, like I said, you could put that square at the feet of our medical system. And what's yeah. happening with a lot of these people is they're going the route you did, Adam. And then a lot of them who aren't as maybe solid as you are, who maybe don't have a good life, maybe they have a terrible life, maybe bad stuff's going on, they're depressed. Then they stay on them. Then they transfer to the stronger shit, yeah. which is a street drug. So many of the people who are addicted to straight up injectable heroin started out doing the pills. Not, not many. I read a stat one time. It's like most. A lot. It's rare, it's rare that somebody goes like, hey, I want to stick a needle of heroin in me. You know, that doesn't happen. What happens is you go, I start off with things like Vicodin and Percocet, and that's not strong enough. So then I go to things like Norco's. Then Norco's is no longer strong enough. Then you go to things like Oxycontins, and then you go to like the, the super strength Oxycontins, which is basically heroin in a pill. It's just right. time release throughout the day. And then you start doing multiple of that. And then you start to go, holy shit, I'm taking 10 of these Oxycontins it's a day. It's bad for my liver. Yeah. It's, it's expensive. Yeah. And then yeah. you go, you you actually, then you, you're you actually such a, a, a drug addict that you do the research and go, oh, wow, it actually is healthier for me to inject it straight you into my blood. You start to rationalize. Yeah, yeah you start to rationalize that injecting it straight into your bloodstream is cheaper and healthier for you than taking all these fucking strong pills, yeah, and that's exactly how it happens. Now, yeah. isn't isn't kratom a, a valid um, you know alternative in terms of like you know somebody who's trying to like wean themselves down off of opiates? So I've done um, a, a f I'm not an expert by any stretch of the imagination on the subject, but I've done a fair amount of, of reading and research. I found it very fascinating because. Uh, I don't remember where I read it first, but I, I read this article about how the government was trying to to regulate. They're trying to make a schedule an, one or an herb, you know, a, yeah. a plant called kratom, which was which had become banned in its country of origin, which I believe is in Southeast Asia, uh -huh. uh, Malaysia. Or uh, yeah, something because like that. it had become a problem, and so they had banned it over there, and then it started coming over here, and and people were saying, "Don't ban it. it it's it's you know, help me with my heroin addiction, this and that." So I started reading about it. And it's 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 not uh, an opiate, but it does operate uh, on the uh, the same system, the opiate system, um, and it does have its own withdrawal and and whatnot. But from what I've read, it's not as bad. However, the people selling it do the same thing that the fucking people that sell things like SARMs and other shit do: is they only tell you the good stuff. They don't tell you that there's. Any, in fact, what you'll read a lot of these people when they sell this stuff is there's no side effects. It's not addictive property. Mm -hmm. It's perfectly fine. Right. Because it's, it's an herb. Yeah. It's they, they'll just no big deal. All that. That's yeah. not true. You still have withdrawal. Yeah. Uh, it's maybe not as harsh as, as heroin, at least from, what I, from the well, studies I've, that I've read. Well, I've got a decent amount of experience with it now. I wish, I'll tell you this, what I wish, I wish I, I had uh, really understood it to the level that I understand it now when I was going through all that uh, Vicodin stuff. I mm -hmm. didn't even know what Kratom was way back when. Yeah. And now what I know about Kratom and how and I've used it enough times to know like how it makes me feel, it would have made the process of winging myself off. In fact, what I actually had turned on a, a family friend of mine on using it to help him like he had came to me and told me that he had been, uh, you know, addicted to using the painkillers and he'd heard me share the story on the podcast and asked my for, for my advice and I was able to give him that advice of you utilizing Kratom and it was like a, it was life-changing for him you know mm -hmm. he was up to like eating six to eight pills a day 
and the the kratom helped him wing off really nicely. It's just it's like a well. Here, this is the way I look at it. Like we'll it's use like methadone. Well, kind of yes, we'll use you as an example, Adam. You kratom or not, you would have stopped using them. Right. That's just you, right? People who are going to be addicted to something will be addicted to something if they don't right. solve the root cause of it. Right, and so what and so I, they just trade one. So for what the I other. would yeah. and what I would share with everybody because, I, like I said, I've got a, a decent amount of experience now, even with kratom. It, here's the things that make it uh, less addictive is because it is so much weaker. You know, just for me to get the same feeling that I would get from one Vicodin, I would have to take like eight, eight kratom pills. So somebody like me who got worked his way all the way up to seven Vicodin, I'd be taking forty pills in one sitting. You're not, and they're like horse pills, they're big powder. Right, right, it's right. like it's all it is is a leaf that's grounded up. So the amount that you would have to consume to give you that same kind of feeling is really high. But this same, like you're saying, Sal, that you know, if you're someone, and I've I've done this before, where oh wow, I took four of these kratom pills and I feel that this this similar type of feeling because it works with the same receptors. Mm -hmm. So you get that same similar feeling, just not as strong. But if I do that every single day for let's say a week or so, by the end of that week, now I need six to feel mm -hmm. that same way, and then I need eight, and then you need like twelve, and then before long, you're doing the same thing that you're doing Viking. It's just a, it's mm -hmm. just a lot less, it's a lot less strong, and so you got to take more of them. But I do notice that, and because I had, I've done it where I've taken kratom for a couple weeks in a row consistently, and then I've completely stopped doing it. And there doesn't seem to be the the same withdrawal type of feelings that I went through when I was with the Vicodin. And, you know, uh, Mark Bell sent me over a couple of his, but he's, he's uh, which is I find interesting that he went this route. And I had a big discussion with him about how intrigued I was by Kratom for these reasons for somebody who would battle with Viking addiction. But he's, he's marketing it as a, as he calls it a mind bullet. And he markets it like a, uh, uh, like almost like a nootropic. Like yeah. A, like well, that's a, because if he says it's for pain, he then yeah, he can't. yeah, he can't yeah. do that. Yeah. So I, you know, I'm kind of on the fence, like mm -hmm. as far as like marketing to people like that. Uh, as far as that being that, I understand why he has to do that for, yeah. le for legality reasons. Because uh, where I see the most value is somebody who deals with pain, chronic pain, and doesn't want to take. Vicodin that's really really addictive and you can use a, a more natural source of that but to like your point Sal it still is pairing with receptors it's your body will still down regulate that you will need more if you continue if you do it consistently and you'll have withdrawal if you go high enough and use it long enough you're gonna have sure you're gonna have opiate withdrawals it's Absolutely the way that they sell that. it really irritates me I, I hate the way that they and they do this with a lot of different things and the supplement space is can be just as fucking bad as the as the big pharma space with, with that kind of stuff. The other thing too with kratom that you have to be careful is there's been reports of people having uh, toxicity issues because it's a imported herb that in like <clears throat> like we know with supplements oftentimes it's not clean. There's mm -hmm. heavy right, metals. Right, and, it's not and, regulated. And, yeah, and so, so it, and it, it, it like you know if you get a Vicodin pill that's pharma, all that's in there is right. yeah. Some some of these people, there's been people in the hospitalized and they'll they'll check what they were taking. They're like, oh shit, this was fucking toxic. Yeah. You well, know? I find it would probably be another one of those drugs or supplements that would be very easy on drug a supplement that would be really easy to pixie dust. Yeah. I mean, it'd be really easy to you know because it's so popular right now. They sell like crazy. Just put some oregano. Yeah. In there. Of course, they sell like crazy. Yeah. It's, it's fucking. Imagine if, <laughs> if Vicodin was a supplement, right? Right. a weaker version of it. Right. Right. Of course, it's going to sell like crazy. Right. Speaking of drugs, uh, they did this huge study. Where they analyzed a bunch of shrimp. Yeah, I saw from you. The you posted that. <laughs> what the hell was that all about? Well, it made big news because so it's wild shrimp. Um, and I'm going to read this read this here for you. So uh, in England, scientists in England were su surprised to find that freshwater shrimp from more than a dozen sites tested positive for cocaine and other <laughs> chemical substances. <laughs> How shitty is that? So where, where, where was this? Like what water did they get this yeah, from? Yeah, near so Columbia? They took sample, yeah. Yeah, down no, no. off the coast of Miami? They took what? samples from 15 <laughs> different river sites across the over 1,400 square mile Suffolk County, Where's that? which is about two Suffolk? hours two hours northeast of London. Uh, so they took them from the rivers there and they found cocaine in these- uh, I don't understand. How's this possible? But, well, uh, obviously the water's filthy. 
Must be tainted. I don't know. Yeah. Maybe some drug. Maybe some drug lords. Uh, yes, yeah, so, some <laughs> lost drug lords. Yeah, like just offloaded yeah. a bunch of. Well, aren't shrimp? Goods. Aren't shrimp uh, bottom feeders? Yeah, like mussels, yeah. and don't they do that? Don't they? Kind I of think filter they're. Out I the, think they're a bottom feeder. Yeah. So <laughs> this shrimp is good. Mm, so good. <laughs> that's why they move so erratically. Well, that's kind yeah. of crazy. <laughs> they they did it in twelve different locations, and all of them had found that. Yeah. Like, I mean, how much cocaine's getting spilled in the yeah. ocean, in the water? Well, I don't know how much they're testing for if it's like a microscopic amount. There was another study a long time ago where they tested uh, $100 bills or something like that, and they found like the majority of them had cocaine that. residue out of them. Yeah, I remember that. That's hilarious. <laughs> oh, and then also the yeah, like a uh, what you, fecal matter like was another part yeah, of that. Yeah, there's poop, like, poop and cocaine. It's fucking dirty. Is dude. on your money. Money is dirty. Yeah. yeah. It's been it's been in places. Yeah. Let's just say that. Yeah, it's, been, it's been around. It's been in noses and butts <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Hilarious. Hey, anyway, yeah. uh, another. This is another study, but this is a kind of interesting one. So they did a strength training study on adolescents, and this was a long-term uh, observational study done over about twelve years. And they found that now, obvious uh, adolescents who had more strength, uh, obviously, you know, lower instances of uh, of all-cause mortality. But check this out. So when you're talking about adolescence, this is a young age, right? Adolescence is, uh, you know, what is that? What's what is that age group between thirteen? Is that what it is? Yeah, and yeah, like twenty. I don't 12 know. To it's sixteen. Yeah, something like that. It's young, right? One of the number one causes of death among adolescents is either accident or suicide. Like very rarely do they die of things like heart attack and cancer and stuff like that, right? Mm -hmm. So what they found was adolescents that had more strength, who were physically stronger. 20 to 30 percent lower rate of suicide wow oh i believe that well, yeah that's kind of like an obvious study for yeah. us it right. is right but how but what a great selling point for Strange getting range. your kids to move and lift weights and and feel better and of course this goes right along lines with other studies that have shown that well i've seen the studies of i think it was seven times more likely to be on uh to have anxiety and be on uh, ADD medication if mm -hmm. you if you don't if you don't strength train or do things like that if you're if you're on uh, lots of electronic devices and yeah stuff. yeah yeah and it goes along the lines with other studies that show that um, you know resistance training is as effective as or more effective as antidepressants for yeah. you know low to moderate levels of, of chronic depression yeah so. it's like we all inherently know the the value of strength training but like when you hear statistics like that i think a lot of parents will perk up and be like uh oh, anything they can do to help you know bulletproof their kid from all these like pot mm -hmm. potential like uh you know issues down the road they're gonna like respond well we're we're in a weird uh, we're kind of seeing the the some people are calling it a crisis of meaning right now where and, and and that may be the, that may be the root. Um, I don't know if I agree 100 percent yet, just because we don't know exactly what's going on. But what we do see is, for the first time in a long time, uh, the younger generation is not going to live longer than the older generation. They're not going to surpass uh, the uh, you know the the lifespan. Hmm. Um, and and it's not because their their health is poor necessarily. It's because suicide and opiate addictions have exploded. Hmm. So be, when you factor those in, the average lifespan, they're not going to, they're not, and, and so a lot of researchers are thinking we're in a crisis of meaning. Yeah. Like here's all these, that makes sense. Because they go ha hand in hand, right? Yeah. Like opiate addiction, overdose, people who are addicted to drugs to the point where they kill themselves many times. They want to escape. They want to escape, yeah. right? And I know the drug plays a role, but we we know that that really it's, it's there's other factors that really play the role because the reality is such a, a, a a big amount of Americans have tried drugs or out drank alcohol yeah. and a large, large percentage didn't become alcoholics or, or drug addicts and kill themselves. The ones that do, it's because they have other issues. So that's going up and suicide is going up. Those both, I believe, are connected. Yeah. So there seems to be some kind of crisis of meaning or whatever that's going on. And mm -hmm. so I think it's all tied to that. I think it's tied to uh, the, the the distractibility, the lack of activity, which makes you feel like shit. Yeah. Um, I think we're in a in a world now where we get everything that we want, mm -hmm. and and yet we're still kind of like sad, and we can't figure out what the fuck's going on. So that's kind of a crisis. Yeah. And sometimes, sometimes I wonder if we're if we're being like Chicken Little, and, and the sky is falling, and it's only going to be. Uh, it's going to be a, a natural progression. We'll evolve around it. We'll be just fine, and we'll, we'll we're smart. We'll figure it out. 
or will there be like this major backlash or fucking aha moment for a lot of people when we because we just haven't and I know I've said it many well, times we have right? to learn right mm-hmm. and this is how we learn the hard way right we always learn this way we I mean, kind of go through periods of trying to sort it out especially when there's like new uh, developing and, and emerging uh, markets out there and like f- new technology that's kind of taking over so we're, we're trying to manage yeah, it, it takes all. A, it takes a few generations sometimes right yeah. after we see like a few generations like okay that wasn't a good idea yeah. maybe we shouldn't all smoke cigarettes all the time yeah. you know what I'm saying <laughs> <laughs> yeah, dude, this is a great transition from that. But uh, uh, like, I'm really excited. There's a, there's a few movies out, uh, you know, over the summer. Like, besides Endgame, I know you already saw Endgame, yeah. so don't spoil it for all the rest of us. But uh, like, Ant Man goes up his butt and then uh, seriously enlarges and blows him. Up. Actually, I That's saw that meme. Him. That was hilarious. <laughs> He's like, Whoa! <laughs> yeah. Uh, but John Wick, I, I brought this up a long time ago, dude. There's a third one coming out to complete the trilogy. I haven't seen it yet. I gotta and watch the first. Too. Okay, so there. I guess there's like some sneak trailer that came out, and like everybody that saw it is like going crazy over it because of the action. So you know how the when the Matrix came out, how like revolutionary a lot of the action scenes. Oh yeah, were. the pause with the the, the camera and it went around them, and that so, was all. Yeah, Matrix. so apparently like they've put a lot of effort in the orchestration of like all these different like fight scenes and action and really yeah. So it's like it's like next level, I guess. I'm like yes, but, dude. When's the last time you saw an action movie? You're like holy shit, I've never seen that before. Yeah. I yeah. so I've never seen John Wick one or two, but I. So, oh really? No, I haven't. But I, I'm gonna. Watch You'll it. love it, dude. You know why I'm gonna watch it? There was a, a a video on. There was a YouTube clip that showed one of his fights, and it was uh, naming all the moves that they were doing when uh-huh. they were fighting. Uh-huh. But most kung fu or fighting films don't involve really good jujitsu and grappling moves. It's always the the striking arts. Yeah. This one in this clip, I saw John Wick do like. Arm bars and judo throws and all these. Oh and that's yeah! How, so I was he really was interested. using their shirts and their coats and everything, like with like these judo tosses and stuff. Yeah, and yeah, it was, it's it's cool, dude. Yeah, so, and then my son wants to watch it too, so we're gonna check yeah, it out together. So there's that, but then there's like okay, so there's Aladdin with Will Smith as the fucking genie. Yeah. Like I don't know about that, bro. Dude. I mean, Robin Williams did such a good. Yeah, job. It's like, that's tough a to, tough. That's a tough one to but, fill. Yeah, but this is live action. It's not cartoon. Yeah, it is live action. Yeah, I think it'll do. He'll a good, probably pull it off. I don't He's know. Will Smith, bro. But Disney kills it. I think it's it. weird. Did you guys? So you guys didn't watch the live action Disney one of Beauty and the Beast, and then the other one. They no. did a good job. No, but I did watch Dumbo. No, I saw, I saw the Beauty and the Beast one. It was good. Wasn't it good? Yeah, yeah, it was good. Dumbo was the one I liked the least, but Disney's that was still always good. good. Yeah. Disney is yeah. always good. They they're so they do such a good job of of picture and cinematography and, uh, and story and, uh, story and audio and the music like everything about well, it. It's I an experience. Like, when you watch a, a Disney movie, yeah. like it or love it or hate it, like it's an experience. Yeah. They do a really good job of, of making it an experience whenever yeah, you watch Yeah, I feel like they've films. really like resurrected their their status and their brand this, and like with their storytelling is gone. They, they figured out that what was missing from everything, all this content out there was like the storytelling and yeah. the, the really good writing and they they've really brought it back to that, and that's really paid off. This is them. why I'm this is why I'm betting on them so hard. Yeah. I really think that if there's yeah, any, I bought more shares like there's uh, anybody, a few days ago. Yeah, if there's anybody who's going to make a run at Netflix, it I really think it's going to be Disney, man. You know which yep. one's going to crush? Because obviously, Endgame just broke massive records, right? Uh, so that's good it, for it Disney. Killed everything. Yeah, they have the uh, the Lion King is going to come out. Oh, yeah, I saw yeah. that is going to mark my words, blow the doors off of uh, every other kid film, cartoon, whatever. Is I think Beyonce's in that one. Too. Is she? So, yeah, that'll do well. So uh-huh. what ha- what happens? And remember what we were talking about the other day. Like, you know, and a lot of people think, oh, I don't know if they can take Netflix down. But what happens when Disney all of a sudden decides when they have built up enough people watching their streaming service, or maybe this is how they get a lot of people, is they skip the, the theater process and they start releasing their blockbuster films straight streaming at some point. And it's and it's yeah. fifty dollars. It makes sense. It's for fifty dollars. You know, it's like crazy expensive, but you on that day you get to watch it for X amount. And I don't, I'm just throwing random things and speculating, but I mean, why wouldn't that be a con- at some point that'll a, happen? Right, a strategy for mm-hmm. them to do that. Look that'll out. be huge. This quaz brought to you by Organifi. For those days you fall short on getting your organic veggies or whole food nutrition, Organifi fills the gap with laboratory tested certified organic superfoods to help give your health and performance the added edge. Try Organifi totally risk free for 60 days by going to Organifi.com. That's O R G A N I F I.com. And use the coupon code MindPump for 20% off at checkout. 
First question is from Ali Barbara 4209. What are some natural ways to fix a hormone imbalance in females? And how can I actually convince my girlfriend to follow through with the fixes? Okay, so I'll start by answering the second one. You can't, so she's going to have to decide to do this herself. So, <laughs> I know, And I know I, I, what, what this makes me think of is like he's probably getting in arguments or whatever with yeah. her, and he's like, God, it's her hormones. I know it. If she just fixes her hormones, it will be good. <laughs> so no, yeah, it, it, she's going to have to do this on her own because what what people need to understand about hormones – is this yes? A lot of the some t- many times the way you feel is a result of your hormones, but your hormones reflect your overall health. So I think a lot of times people look at the hormone problems and think, if I just fix the hormones, everything's going to be amazing. I'm going to feel great. Yeah. Um, no, it's there's a reason the why they're yeah. yeah there's they're, a reason why they're in balance. They're inversely related. Yeah. So, yeah you're, you're you could fix your hormones. Hormones be good. And you get fucked up sleep, and then your hormones not so good no more. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You mean they're directly related? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. It's it, so they they reflect your health. So the best way to balance your hormones for anybody, this is both for men and for women, is to really take care of your health and and look at the hierarchy of things uh, in terms of the importance uh, to your health. So like number one, I'd say is sleep. Number one is going to be sleep. Sleep immediately affects your hormones. You can literally, as a man, for example, have healthy testosterone levels and just have one really, really terrible night of sleep and they can test your testosterone the next day and it'll be impacted. Drop. It'll be impacted, right? Yeah. And testosterone is a, is a, is a good example because that is, it reacts so quickly to you know what's happening in your life or whatever. Um, activity is another one. She needs to exercise appropriately. Strength training. Man. Strength training is the best. It's got to be the best. Yes. And one of the mistakes I see a lot of people make, in particular women, is not that they're not exercising; it's that they're exercising too much. Right. Yeah. Not not the group. Not the group X class. Not Zumba. Not CrossFit. Not some high. No, they need to do straight sets. Strength training that will proper rest periods. Yes. Yep. Yep. So yeah. so good activity, and then of course. A good diet, and and what I mean by good diet, if you want to balance your hormones out, uh, now we're not going to be talking about gut health here, so let's pretend that she's got decent gut health, because if she has bad gut health, you got to fix that. But if she has okay gut health, then it's a balanced diet. It's not a restricted diet. It's not a keto diet. It's not where you're cutting out your carbs. It's not a vegan. It's definitely not a super low fat diet. Definitely not, because you need fat for you know for hormones and whatnot. Um, and you're, so everything has to be balanced because sometimes I've also worked with, you know, fe- women who are like, oh, my hormones are, you know, I, I, I got things tested and my thyroid is low or whatever. It's, and I look at their diet and I'm like, wow, you eat under 50 grams of carbs a day. Why, why do you do that? Oh, because I heard keto is it's like, okay, no, uh, going too low in, in anything for too long tends to cause, uh, problems or changes in hormones. And if you combine that with other issues like lack of sleep and your workout program is not great or whatever, then why don't we balance those things out? Let's bring the, the carbs back in a little bit and see what happens. So just you got to get healthy because then your hormones reflect your, your good health. What happens with a lot of people, especially in, in modern societies, is we go to the doctor and we get tested and they say, uh, okay, these hormones are off or you have these symptoms that we think are related to hormones. Here's how we fix it. Mm -hmm. Take hormones. Pills. Yeah. We're going to give you birth control. This happens a lot to Mm -hmm. women. Like Mm -hmm. women will have severe PMS symptoms, um, for example, uh, and doctors will say, oh, here's some, let's put you on birth control. That'll, that'll take care of it. And what you're essentially doing is you're blunting the symptom of a deeper root. So to give you another analogy, it would be like giving painkillers to somebody who's banging their head against the wall so that they don't feel the pain of of their uh, from their head without stopping them from banging their head against the wall. So that's what exogenous hormones do. This is why um, you know this is another reason why I think athletes who are on testosterone replacement therapy are still considered at an advantage to their competitors, even though their hormone levels are the same, because when you're on exogenous hormones. You don't get those natural fluctuations that you get when you're lack of sleep. Testosterone's always high. Yes, consistent. Or it's always the same, right? So you have an advantage. You get away with more stuff. So 100%, I wouldn't, you know, I wouldn't convince her to work on her hormones. I would look at overall health. How's your stool? How's your skin? Let's look at your sleep. Let's look at your activity. Maybe you're doing too much with your activity. 
Let's re- reduce it back down. Lift weights two or three days a week. Uh, you know, get good sunshine during the daytime. Make sure you turn down the lights late at night so you get good sleep. Um, you know, look at your diet. All those things, and then give it time because it usually takes a few months of doing that before the hormones start to come back, and then her body her body decides. It wants to be fertile. It wants to be healthy. She, you also have to say that she, she may actually not want to have sex with you because it has nothing to do with her hormones. She just may not want to have sex with you. <laughs> uh, <yeah. laughs> Did you feel like that's yeah. this question, right? Yeah. It's like, it's Isn't like there some kind of booster. You're right. There's like, there's, like, there's, like your, there's like your boy. He's like, I gotta ask these my yeah. boys. I ain't getting sex, but once every other week, yeah. right now. Hey, like, bro. So, if I some, knew that, uh, yeah, I would, I would <laughs> happily share it. Something's wrong with her hormones. She doesn't want to have sex more. I like convince her. She doesn't agree with me yeah. all the time. Could so. be, could yeah. be you, bro. Yeah. Yeah. And, and I want to be clear i'm not a i'm not a hormone spe- none of us are hormone specialists so if there really is a, a real issue uh aside from the fact that her hormones are just f- reflecting that her stress is too high or whatever um she would need to go to a doctor but you know along those lines they came out there's a there's a prescription pill for women who have chronically low sex drive Do you guys no know that? way yes there is like a, a viagra for chicks it's it's kind of like that. It's kind of like that, but it, it's not, but it's not this? to increase blood flow to the to their genitals, like for a man. It literally makes them want more sex. Well, how does that work? Uh, it sounds know. like uh, magical unicorn yeah. shit. You no, could, no, no, no. You could sprinkle this in her soup. Or her cereal in the morning. No, that would be terrible. <laughs> that would be so fucked up. Just trying to help a guy out here. <laughs> no, it's called uh, Adii. Adii. I can't know if I'm pronouncing it right. The 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 technical name for the drug is filbanserin, and uh, it's filbanserin. I got to look this up because I know it's uh, um, <laughs> it works on a particular receptor. Yeah, and don't sprinkle that in her cereal until until Sal figures this no. out. Oh, by the way, the person asking the question is a woman. So oh, it's FYI. her girlfriend. Yes. Oh well, maybe oh, wow. she. Well, then maybe she's not into you. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? We've been answering this all <laughs> same, wrong. Same rule applies. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Maybe yeah. it's not. Maybe it's not. Barbara. Maybe it's not her hor- hormones. Yeah. <laughs> no. or maybe she just one. wants to help. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Damn. Yeah. yeah. All right. Next question is Kim Stagram zero one. We know your thoughts on CrossFit. What are your thoughts on Les Mills classes such as grit, body pump, etc.? Mm. Les Mills is still a thing, huh? Les Mills. Yeah, the pump. Yeah, they're so Les Mills, they make these group classes and then they they sell them to gyms. big box gyms, right? Yeah. And they sell the programming, they sell the the branding. I remember when Body Pump first hit yeah, body at pump. 24 Hour Fitness. Right. Were you guys there when it first hit, or was, was that before you guys were there? Yeah, I was in Golds when it really kind of took off. So. Yeah, I remember when it first hit, and it fucking blew, This is like before Zumba, right? It yeah. blew up, oh, and it was like Zumba. weight training, group classes. It, in reality, it was just you know yeah. like any other cardio class or whatever. Moving weights really fast. Yeah, I don't know. What, what are your thoughts on group uh, classes, Adam? <laughs> <laughs> we're going to defer to Adam. Well, it's... It, I, wow. Yeah. Uh, it, when when I talk about group classes and how terrible I think they are, uh, these are like the the cream of the crop. I mean, these are the worst of the worst. These are the cream of the crap. Yeah, the, this is the cream <laughs> of the cream. Of the this crap. is the cream of the crap right here. I mean, um, and and I'm and no offense to the the group X instructor that's listening. That's n- not like the overgeneralization that I'm going to make, but for the most part, most of these instructors that are teaching this class know very little about fitness, very little about nutrition, very little about uh, exercise and strength training. Um, they go through a, a weekend at best course, maybe a week long course, and get certified to teach these courses. They have high energy and they're good on a microphone, and that's what justifies them being now an instructor or a trainer. And it's basically just cardio in a class, and they and they make it fun and exciting and it's cool and it's but they're crap. I yeah. Mean, they're crap. They're well, just, the body pump classes used to annoy the hell out of me because they were supposed to be resistance training. Yeah. And I would watch the form in the classes and they were just fucking atrocious and then I'd look at the instructor's form and go, "Oh, that's why." Oh, yeah. And they do they like don't know how to 50 do it. deadlift reps. Yeah. I remember watching one time and then they'd get into step ups right immediately after that with no rest breaks mm-hmm. or anything. It's I just, mean, it's, oh, it's, it's cringeworthy. Uh, it's all crap. I mean, yeah. the, the, the thing, I think the most beneficial group class I've ever seen inside like a 24 or Golds is like a yoga class. Yeah. yeah. You know yeah, what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah, like, yeah. You, you, it's not, it's, it's pretty. And those well, can be I'm, terrible too. You need to have a great instructor. Right, right. But I mean, it's, it's a little bit harder to fuck up yoga. Like, you yeah. can really, and, and that's, and I'm, again, not trying to insult a really good yoga instructor who's like, actually, Adam, it could be 
really challenging. Oh, they yeah. can. You can fuck up yoga. Yeah, you can. Me. I'm not saying you can't, but I'm, it's it's really easy to fuck up a body pump class, you know, yeah. or really easy to make a, a Zumba class ridiculous. Like it's. Yeah. Well, I the, the benefits th- th- that I see from these from group classes are you are see this. benefits. Yeah, here's the benefits. Here. If you're somebody that just needs to Im- increase activity and you want to have fun doing it and you just want to go move more. Uh, then go do it. If group classes are your sole form of exercise, not a good idea. I hate when we have to distill it down to this. Like, if it if it means you're sitting on the couch and eating Dorito chips, well, see, and that's sho- the reality, though. A lot of people. I'd like, rather them walk around the block r- than do that. I'd be honest. Yeah. I'm with you, Justin. It's like, you know, I hate that we have to like say that it's it would, it's good if you need to move around. It's like, no, it's not even good if you need to move around. That's the thing I don't like about it. Is like yeah, there's it's creating bad. You, patterns. you know what you'd be better off and free to go do? Go find the nearest hill and go hike it. You yeah. know, or go go on a two mile walk with your your spouse or your significant other. Like go go or the, your your friends that like to meet at these classes. Go for a nice long stroll with them it's, it's well if you look at the it, now to, to your point adam if you look at the the long-term use of people who do group classes it's it's actually quite low what you find in group classes a lot of are new people coming in constantly trying it out having fun getting burnt out leaving and it's this huge cycle very few people do it long 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 term and that's because they don't provide a whole lot of benefit aside from just the moving and calorie burn aspect of it Mm -hmm. injury rates can be high because you're teaching a group of 30 people it also attracts the people that i think that it's the worst for do i think that i can i can incorporate some group class and be fine i know how to because i would know what i would need to adjust i know what i would need to adjust as far as around that where i need to be nutritionally but who it attracts okay is the and i've got thousands of examples of this because of how long we were in the gym industry and you'd see these people come through i remember every all the members that would come in and that's what they wanted was group classes and they would line outside out it's the person who is uh scared to lift weights by themselves but knows they need to get in there and move they don't uh they they normally were out of shape just the month before they were deconditioned they weren't doing any sort of training or exercise before they and then they go from not having a gym membership, not working out, mm-hmm. not eating correctly to, okay, now I'm eating salads. Now I have my gym membership. Now I'm going to my group class. And yeah. it's like the, the formula is just setting them up for a disaster. And a lot of the motivation behind going to these classes is the fun and novelty aspect of it. Yes. Mm-hmm. Which if, if your motivation to do anything is the fun and novelty, that's eventually going to wear off and it's not fun anymore. So if you're going to your Zumba, oh my God, I love Zumba. So fun. I go with my my friends. We have a great time. Yeah. At some point, the fun is gone, but yet you got to keep working out. And so that's why you see the drop-off rate is so high, it, which is why the drop-off rate is high with a lot of forms of exercises. People want to go for the fun, and then the fun is gone. But group classes really, that's how they sell their class, right? That's what they capitalize on. Um, it's not individualized. And in all group classes, most group classes are just different forms of, of cardio. You know, whether yeah. they have weights or they have steps or they have gloves and you're pretending to kickbox and that kind of it's all well, cardio. That's, yeah and that's sort of where you run into where it it, it it doesn't have that like energetic high fun element if it's not it doesn't have the cardio uh, version of that that's why it always ends up turning into a cardio version of it because yeah. people get like well you know I have to stand around here and you know wait to recover fully like they get like it's boring yeah like, it's I get just that a lot. The, the, the the client that I think again that it, that it attracts most and again this is an overgeneralization there's always exceptions to the rule but for the majority that would like to go or go to those classes what I and because I've trained a lot of these I've trained a lot of the group instructors the instructors mm-hmm. they would come to me because they're like Adam I'm teaching five classes a day and I can't lose these last 20 30 pounds yeah. And they can't, and they and they'd hire me and train them. And one of the things I I would be so tough for me to do is because that's how they get paid. Yeah. And they're teaching those. Oh, classes. I used to tell them stop doing it with the with the class and just right. teach instruct. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And so what I'd have to do is like I'd say, listen, and I know this is going to be tough, but like I, I you can't be doing the class with all of them. Mm-hmm. That's you. What you we need to totally fix your metabolism. You're oh, you're under consuming for the amount of movement and how much intensity you're you're doing all day long so the, your stress levels are, are are super high to your body the signal you're sending to your body is super super loud and stressful and your body is not knowing what to do it's not burning fat what we should do is 
straight sets, long rest periods, maybe strength training three days a week, slowly started to increase your calories, rebuild your metabolism, and taking somebody who's doing these classes all week long, thats it's so hard to do that, and it's yeah. a long process. So, yeah, yeah. And that's what most of the people that gravitate those classes, again, there's always exceptions to the rule, but most of the people in my experience that take those classes, what's best for them is almost opposite of what that class is providing for them. No, I think the best thing to do, and, and people need to realize, it's nice to tell members when they when they come in to, to enroll all the time, because I used to sell personal training so hard, partially because I used to be a trainer, but I was a trainer before I managed gyms. But also the other reason is being, I knew that was the, if I had any shot at turning this new member into a lifelong fitness enthusiast or somebody who's going to maintain their health and fitness in a good way forever, the best shot I had that I, in my tools was, uh, was personal training. That's the best. And people would always look at the price of it and be like, Oh, it's, you want me to spend $1,500 on a personal trainer when I can just spend a hundred dollars and pay 30 bucks a month to be a member. Right. And I used to tell them like, look, look, look at it this way. What would you rather do? Take $30 every month and burn it or take $1,500 and get incredible return for your investment. Yeah. That's the way you got to look at it. So my advice to people is if you can afford a personal trainer, hire a trainer for two or three months, at least two or three months, it's going to cost you a couple grand or whatever. Do that first have them train you, learn proper form, correct muscle imbalances, get yourself started on a good individualized routine, not at a group type of class, but an individualized routine. And of course, a, a step down for that would be, mm -hmm. you know, getting one of our programs, for example, which is not individualized, but it's far superior than a group class that's, you know, that, like one of those cardio based type things. Do that and then in, in, in invest in something that's going to give you a high level, a high rate of return. The classes, aside from the fun and the maybe, you know, the fact that you're moving kind of aspect, not a lot of benefits aside from those things. Next question is from Abby Carson One. What is the ideal body fat percentage for men and women? Ideal, I, I think, what are they talking about? Ideal in terms of health, I would assume, right? Just kind of longevity or whatnot. Mm. There's a range. This mm -hmm. is what's, here's what's interesting. You can be very, very healthy as a man at 10% body fat, and you can be very, very healthy as a man, almost twice as much body fat, 17, 18%. Yep. So, and that's a big difference. I mean, if I took, if you looked at a picture of a guy who was 10% and a guy that was like 17 or 18%, it's the difference between like slightly heavier dad bod yeah. and abs. Okay. Yeah. That's the difference. But both of them can be extremely uh, healthy. Um, now, for men, when you start to go above 20% body fat, regardless of how healthy you are in every other aspect, you start to get negative, uh, uh, negative things uh, associated with just the fact that you have that much body fat on your body. Because body fat is a hormone-sensitive tissue, and, and having too much of it, regardless of other factors, has some negative uh, effects on the body. For women... You know, women, if you're in the 20% range and you're really, really healthy, you could be 20%, you could be 28%, and the difference is not that that big. Your health, you could be healthy either way. Once women hit over 30%, I think, is when you start to see some of the negative, uh, you know, aspects of, of having higher body fat percentages. As far as ideal, that's that's from person to person. I would. What do they show for men? Like men want to be around like 14, 15%. That's not shredded. That's not overweight. It's kind of like a general healthy body fat. For women, it's something like 24%, something like that. The range is pretty big. It's. It, I think it's more, you just want to be careful of the two extremes. I think being... Yeah, that's a good point. The other extreme, that's super lean, isn't good either. Yeah, no, there's that, absolutely not. I think that there's... Uh, I, sometimes too, that it's one of the things I don't like about uh, you know our space because unfortunately, uh, sex sales and looking shredded and ripped is you know like best for that you know and getting attention, and so we tend to promote you know speaking as in general of the entire space this image of you know four to six percent body fat, and I just I don't think that's a healthy range for a majority of uh, and we're talking about men for me right now the four to six percent 
a healthy range to be trying to maintain your body year round. Like it's just, it's too low. No, men have a much higher tolerance for leaner body fat percentages though. Yeah. So a man can, can oh, walk you, around shredded. I, I think a, a lot of people can, but I don't think it's ideal. Well, you know? what I mean is men versus women. Like yeah. uh, women have a lot more negative uh, effects from getting. Well, it affects their menstrual cycle, yeah. lose hair, like all kinds of like yeah, detrimental things can happen. But I mean, Bad things can happen to men too, in terms of you know metabolism and everything else. But yeah, it, it does sex, get more sensitive. Sex drive for men too, bro. Yeah, my sex, sex drive. drive would die the oh, last yeah. month. Yeah. Oh yeah, the last month when I started getting sub six percent, and I started getting down to that five, four, three. When mm -hmm. I started getting down there, pff, I want nothing to do with sex. Yep. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it completely killed my libido. But even thing. women, like for example, and I mean, you know, men and women. Women always tend to maintain a higher body fat percentage than men, no matter what, right? But a man who's let's say 8% or 9% body fat can be relatively healthy forever at that body fat percentage. A woman at like 14% body fat, 13% body, she's not competitive shredded. She's very, very lean. Maintaining that too long will many times affect a woman's hormones negatively because a woman's body is, you know, it evolved to, you know, sustain life, right? To be this vessel mm -hmm. for, potentially vessel for another human life. And when the body fat starts to get low, or even if it just stays kind of low for too long, the body's like, "Yeah, we don't want to. We don't want you to procreate." And so it adjusts its hormones uh, accordingly. And so women will oftentimes have irregular or periods or lose their periods. You know how often uh, female athletes lose their periods due to uh, mm -hmm. being too lean? Mm -hmm. It's actually very common, and a lot of girls don't even notice it because they're on birth control. So because they're on birth control, they don't realize that their natural cycle is fucked up because they're just on birth control. Yeah. But if you talk to like female athletes who are really lean and they're not on birth control, a, a decent percentage of them just well, they don't even get their period. A majority of all female competitors lose it. It's just part of the. It's been known as like just part of the process. Yes, yes, yeah, yes. It's really common that they lose their period. Yeah. So um, it's it, exactly Adams put it perfectly. You, it's the two, it's the two ends you want to kind of stay away from. Um, the, the too low and the, the too high, but there's that range in the middle. And I think it's important that we communicate that because I think a lot of people think in order to be optimized health, you have to be really lean. That's not true. You no. could be heavier, you know, you could have no ab definition and be excellent health, be phenomenal health. Once you go down to, to the too lean and the too high, that's where you start to see the problems. In fact, the too lean, if you look at it uh, population wise, People who are underweight have some of the worst health, obviously, right? They can't keep weight on. They're, they're, and you're throwing in people in there who have illnesses and whatnot uh, as well. So that's, that's basically it. And that's something that's important for people need to consider is that, you know, if they think that their health is, isn't good because they need to be shredded, not true. You, that range is quite big. Next question is from Very Cool Allen. How do you think someone like The Rock can keep up his physique and yet work so hard and sleep so little? Well, this is a really good example of um, we talk about the benefits of taking synthetic testosterone. Um, you can get away with things like the lack of sleep and and get away with things that the average person can't. So I was just mentioning it earlier on this podcast that, you know, when you when you take something like that, you or if you're not taking that, the average human does not have consistent hormones day to day or even probably hour to hour. Mm. I mean, it's this constant ebb and flow of up and down and, you know, everything from stress to sleep to uh, your emotions to uh, what you ate to whatever you're supplementing. All these things are causing it to fluctuate up and down. And somebody who is uh, injecting it or, or taking it by pill, it, they consistently can keep it, you know, regardless if they had a bad day or bad night of sleep or regardless if they ate really optimal for their body the day before because they're taking it synthetically. Right. So he's a perfect example. So now I've heard rumors of him saying that he's not taking uh, any testosterone or, or whatever anymore and that he's admitted that he used to. Uh, no, uh, yeah. the, the new, the new thing now is, and it's, it's been going on for a while now is, uh, this is even why too, I didn't even like to talk about my hormone replacement therapy or whatever that is. 
you know, now we, we, we just say like, oh, if we're taking a moderate dose, it's HRT, therefore I'm not taking steroids. Yeah, I'm, not I'm t- natural. It's like the same thing. It's like it's just how much I'm taking of it. Like I'm taking steroids or yeah. taking testosterone, no matter how you want to look at it. It just sounds nicer that way. And so some people, when they're but taking- You never get any lows, right, which is great. Right, when they're taking a, a quote-unquote therapeutic dose, don't like to claim that they're taking steroids, but it, it yes, you still are, and the, you still have these advantages that we're talking about. Is you don't have you can get away with a lot of the stuff yeah. that the average person. The other does. thing too, I think, with celebrities is I think it, it's, they're they're constantly. You got to keep this in mind. The, it, the Rock, image. yeah, The Rock is a. Um, I mean, he's an actor. He's a phenomenal celebrity. When he was a wrestler, he put on an incredible show. In movies, he's an actor. Do you really think that his social media reflects the real, you know, you know, person? Uh, no, I don't think we really know who, you know, Dwayne Johnson is in real life except for his his close friends and part of his image is this fucking hardcore, hard work and don't need no sleep, I can do it all kind of person. And so it it, it benefits his brand for him to promote himself as that kind of person. Like, right. I fucking bust some ass all the time. I woke up at 4 a.m. Well, Under Armour sponsors him. You yeah, know, yeah. I'm sure that they don't really want him to highlight the fact of any kind of a usage of, you know, exogenous testosterone or anything like yeah, that. Yeah, no, I looking at the guy, I would bet that he places his health pretty high on his priority list. Yeah. No I, doubt he's a hard worker and, and like, a, a you know, a badass. Yes. I mean, we're not denying that. At I all. would bet he takes care of his sleep. I bet his diet is fucking dialed all the time. He probably has someone who makes his food for him constantly. The guy never skips a workout. He has, yeah. when he does a movie, I think it's in his contract to have like a, a trailer gym yeah. that he works out. He has a home gym that looks incredible. I would bet you the dude gets good sleep, eats good, and works out appropriately for his body on a consistent basis. That being said, you have to consider this. Everybody has a potential. And so when you take somebody who maybe has incredible genetics, they're also on synthetic testosterone, their potential is higher than yours. So maybe The Rock, let's say he is getting poor sleep right now, this is as good as he's going to look with his poor sleep. If he had great sleep, he'd look even better. Right, good example. Yeah, just the, 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 the fact that he looks way better than you doesn't mean that you know he, you know, he gets away with it somehow. His potential is just well, and totally different. To that point, too, mm. there is a po- possibility that he's natural now. I highly doubt it, and I would probably bet, bet the house on it that he's not, but... Mm. It, it doesn't matter. He could have the genetic potential to be able to build a physique like that and do those things that other people can. That's this is why too. It's really bad to look at other people as examples. You and can't. this yeah. is also why I have a problem with um, we're just speculating our space and a lot of the most popular fitness people that are giving advice are people that have like hacked their own body. Like they've figured it out for themselves. Like. Yeah, if I train like this and I do X, Y, and Z, look how jacked and awesome I am, and now I'm sharing that with the world and trying to help them out. Well, you know what? There's such an individual variance in so many people that maybe what's working for you won't work for the person that you're speaking to or may not work for a majority of the people, and that's more often true than not, I think. Right, and Dwayne Johnson is, by all stretches of the imagination, he is not like the average person. He's an outlier. He's yeah. he's a he's a fucking incredible athlete. He's a massive dude. His dad was jacked. I don't know if you ever looked at his picture yeah, of his dad. Yeah. He's just a big, muscular, athletic dude that's nothing like uh, most people. And so comparing yourself to him, I mean, I mean, it was it was funny when we when we first met Ben Pikulski and how he was trying to lose muscle. He was purposely trying to lose muscle, and he's more muscular than. I could ever get with any amount of uh, anabolic steroids. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. Mm-hmm. So his potential so high to look at The Rock and be like, hey, he's not doing all the things I have to do in order to maintain a good physique, and he still looks better than me. You know, compare yourself to yourself. But again, at the end of the day, I bet you, I, I bet you guys money, the dude prioritizes sleep, training, and diet um, uh, because it's part of his brand. He has right. to look a particular right. way. So, And with that, go to mindpumpfree.com. And download any of our guides for free. We've got a lot on there, and they cost nothing. You can also find us all on social media. You can find us on Instagram. Justin's page is Mind Pump Justin. Yeah. My page is Mind Pump Sal, and Adam is Mind Pump Adam. Thank you for listening to Mind Pump. If your goal is to build and shape your body, dramatically improve your health and energy, and maximize your overall performance, check out our discounted RGB Super Bundle at mindpumpmedia.com. The RGB Super Bundle includes MAPS Anabolic, 
MAPS performance, and MAPS aesthetic. Nine months of phased expert exercise programming designed by Sal, Adam, and Justin to systematically transform the way your body looks, feels, and performs. With detailed workout blueprints and over 200 videos, the RGB Super Bundle is like having Sal, Adam, and Justin as your own personal trainers, but at a fraction of the price. The RGB Super Bundle has a full 30-day money-back guarantee, and you can get it now plus other valuable free resources at mindpumpmedia.com. If you enjoy this show, please share the love by leaving us a five-star rating and review on iTunes and by introducing Mind Pump to your friends and family. We thank you for your support, and until next time, this is Mind Pump. <laughs>